Let's see how the costs are being generated in this model. As you can see, we have divided them into two, so variable costs and fixed costs. We will start with the fixed costs. And so in fixed costs, we put everything which does not really depend on production size. In our case, we assume that most of the salaries apart from bonus part are fixed costs. Then we have some minor materials rather connected with the maintenance of the place. Obviously maintenance, rent for not on space that we have to pay, depreciation and external services. Now, when we go to details, you will see that the salaries are generated using three things. So we use the number of full-time equivalents or the workers. Then we assume certain average salary per FTE and we assumed some sort of a social securities as a percentage of the salary. Out of this, we get this 4 million we are talking about in terms of the costs, which are here. Maintenance the materials, they are like fixed. Depreciation is calculated in a simplified manner. So we basically take the total assets cross value. Remember this different than the net asset value you will find in the balance sheet. And then we assume certain average years of depreciation. So this is in our case assumed to be 12. So out of this, we get the 5 million of depreciation. And rent is basically number of square meters by cost. Out of this, we get the total costs, fixed costs, which are here in row 10. And we can also calculate fixed unit costs. So we divide it by the units produced. In our case, we assume that we produce as much we sell. So there is no actually inventory. As you can see, the unit uh, fixed cost will differ depending on the production. So when the production is going down, like here, the, the cost is going up. Whereas when the production is going up, like in year five, then we basically go down with the fixed costs. The other part are the variable costs. So we can go either through here or going back and from the summary. So let's use this sheet. As you will see here, we have the following parts. So we have uh, materials and energy. Then uh, we have the salary and social securities. And here we actually have the bonus external services, depending on the production size. And this gives us the, the total variable costs. And we also calculate here the total unit costs being sum of variable unit costs and total fixed costs. When it comes to materials, we have three parts. So we have raw materials, then we have packaging and energy and utilities. Here we basically calculate each and every one of them, assuming some unit cost and number of units being produced. So out of this, we get the costs per category. And out of this, as a sum, we get the, the costs of the total category. Salaries and social securities, we assume certain bonus per unit and we have number of units produced, but we also have a threshold. So if you are above the threshold, then you get the bonus. If you're not, then you're not get. So this is actually why in year two, we don't have the bonus at all because they didn't go beyond the, the threshold, which is 4,000. So they produced just 4,000. So this was below the threshold. And then we've got the external services. So they are again assumed as a unit cost and then a number of produced units. In this case, it will be most likely things connected with, for example, logistics or delivery or warehousing. Out of this, we get obviously the variable costs in total. So this is how it looks. So you can see that the total, what does depend on, as you can see, it's roughly the same over the whole period. The only dip is here in year two because we didn't pay the bonus because they were low. And then we add variable unit costs and total fixed costs and we get the total unit cost that we're gonna use to calculate the gross margin in the next lecture.